Did anybody else feel uncomfortable? I mean, probably. Yes. With, the, <laughs> like, with, with like Dex's fingers. Though, oh, I don't I was, know if I noticed. Oh my God. I physically like, ooh, like, <laughs> like shiver. I was like, oh my God. I, I mean, there was a lot of creepy. That's how I felt about the weasel. So I yeah, don't think yeah. I noticed the dog fingers. Weasel, you mean the walking penis? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Literally, we were the whole time we were calling him Greasy Dick Weasel. Because yeah. Dick Weasel. he was, why was he so wet? <laughs> <laughs> and he was always standing like he was about to <laughs> probe something. Yeah. Oh my God. He good. kept going in between people legs yes <laughs> when that character first showed up we all went what the f- is, is that happening? and it took us like a whole scene to realize it was supposed to be a weasel and i was like that's a dick no to self cheesel t weasel rocks making stuff is hard especially in the entertainment world where big egos bigger budgets and just plain bad luck can make things go horribly wrong And we're going behind the scenes of these disastrous, never-ending, and often dangerous productions to find out why it was a shit show. Hello, Ikes! This is uh, it was a shit show. You gotta, I'm you gotta, I'm you got to explain that to me later cuz I could not figure it out. Oh, I made him pause the movie and explain what the fuck that meant. I'm Tennessean Ian, joined by Peppermint Clint. Hello. Bokeh Ray. And Hello? today's returning guest, Dandel- Dandelion Ryan. Oh, I love that. <laughs> so you're going to choose your products. Dandelion Ryan. I mean, I'm obviously like a Summer's Eve style, like feminine hygiene product. (laughs) With a name like Bokeh Ray. (laughs) It could easily be a can of of fruit. No. (laughs) Okay, you've chosen. I'm I'm Summer's Eve. Yeah. (laughs) What am I, toothpaste? To keep your parts fresh. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. I, I originally had you as Roto Rooter Ray, but then then you were very boxed in. I mean, that could also be a feminine product, I guess. To be fair, <laughs> I'm a box of tea bags, <laughs> smooth as a dandelion. Ryan helps me sleep. <laughs> What are you? Just toothpaste? Oh, just toothpaste. Just plain boring old, <laughs> boring old toothpaste. Generic brand. No flair. <laughs> yeah, wait, what was yours, Ian? What Tennessee kind of... and Ian. Like barbecue sauce? <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. I All like right, that. there you go. Barbecue sauce. Like a, or like a nice whiskey. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Mix that in with some dandelion Ryan. I, mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess it depends on where your, your grocery store is located. Like, are you in a grown-up state where you can buy whiskey in the grocery store, or are you a grocery store in Utah? Yeah, that's so stupid. <laughs> where, your, where your liquor's right next to your toothpaste. <laughs> Don't mix the two. <laughs> yeah. So last night we held our weekly shitty movie night and watched the cinema revelation that is Food Fight. Oh my God. And I strictly forbid anyone revealing to Ray (laughs) the year in which this film was made. Yes. And no one was allowed to tell me. (laughs) And she didn't look up anything. And you gave me strict instructions too to just not look up anything. Yeah. Did, yep. did you then, look anything? Not before. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but then you okay. rightfully had probably many questions I that did. you needed answers <laughs> yeah. to. I was I, baffled by the all-star cast. <laughs> I had, okay, so bef- we, we when we went into this, I was like, I have three, well, I had two theories, and then somebody added a third theory that I'll bring up later. But my two theories were, okay, this is like, this is like Empires of the Deep, and it's a, a Chinese billionaire, some crazy Chinese billionaire who's just like, what? Yeah, I can make a movie. And just had, like, access to all of these brands and, like, had enough money to just pay these movie stars to do this shitty, shitty movie. And then the second theory was it's someone's kid. Like, some someone that knows all those movie stars that works in uh, Hollywood, their kid wanted to make a film. Those are my two theories. <laughs> yeah. I When I told my, my 12-year-old, he's 12, Ryan, uh, I, I told him when he when I told when I told him that it was food fight. He goes, oh, he lit up. He's like, "What? Really?" He's like, "I've watched so many videos about this." The twelve year olds know about it. Yeah, and he's like, he's like, "Dad, can I tell you?" I was like, "No." I was like, "You cannot tell me, or else Ian's gonna beat you up." 
<laughs> he, he, he wanted I'm... to tell me so much. He's like, oh, but dad, please let me just tell you. He's like, no. He's like, oh, my friends and I talk about this movie all the time. <laughs> what? So it's in the lexicon of 12-year-olds. Yeah, but it is I, I like not appropriate for 12-year-olds. I mean, I watched it and it's not appropriate for him, for, but not for the reasons you think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So <laughs> someone, someone last night said the movie felt AI generated. Yes. <laughs> Which, that was the third theory. Which very well could have been, like, right. based off of what you watched. Um, yeah, someone was like, this was made by Mid Journey and Chat GPT. It was like, absolutely. <laughs> if you told me this movie was made within the last year, I would agree with you. Found some Charlie Sheen and bot. Some tiger blood. Seriously. <laughs> I tried to find some tiger blood to bring for Clint's closet, and I don't think uh-huh. I have any. Um, if you know the answer already, keep it to yourself. But for the rest of you, guesses as to when you think this movie was made. Uh, I'm, ha- when did Shrek come out? The first Shrek? 2001? Yeah. 2001 See, so. I'm going to say it's actually later than that. I have a sneaking suspicion yeah, that this has been made in the last like five years. I'm going to say it looks it looks like 2005. Like It looks like an unfinished anim- animatic from 2005. Is what I is the feeling I get. I'm gonna say like 2017, and that that answer scares me. It scares me. Do you do you know the answer? I, I do. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you, no, it's fine. I didn't look up anything before I watched it, and then I forgot, and I was like, "What the fuck was that?" And then I was like, "Yeah." So I, I spoiled a few things for myself. Uh, so I guess we'll just you know what we'll we'll just go through the story, and then you guys will find out. Oh my god, the, the suspense. Okay, so uh, like any food item, let's not go beyond our shelf date and talk <laughs> oh my God. food fight. Ian, did you make this movie? <laughs> oh my, I'm scared now. I'm scared this is going to be a reveal that Ian made this movie. I'm going to oh, have to get man. a divorce later. I What? I would absolutely own this. <laughs> like, Just be like, yeah, I fucking made this. Where's hey, all our that internet one, money? Remember that one... Uh, Short you made for uh, for college that I did no, voice for. No, that's what we were talking about last night. Was like my, our machinima was better than. Oh yeah, crap. we did voices for his oh, yeah. machinima too. We were the that's main. Oh, characters. you were the main characters. I that's right. About that. No, yeah, was in it as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Reminder literally was like, this looks like the machinima movie we made in college, and it's like, <laughs> yes, that's but brilliant. actually the movie you guys made was better. <laughs> But who's are we going to find to slithers and filthy slime through the sewers, go into enemy territory and cut the power lines to start the lightning storm? Ah, slither and slime? It would appear you are in need of a professional. How do we know you're not with Brand X? According to the lady, I'm the poster boy for undesirable icons. You know, boss, if you don't mind the suggestion, we could fight fire with fire here. Welcome to the war, Weasel. It is a far, far better thing I do than I have ever done before. Well, you gotta admit, that's not saying much. Oh! Go to self. New friends not working out. Okay, so if you are interested, there are multiple versions of the full movie on YouTube. There's what? <laughs> There's not like versions of the film, like oh. multiple people have uploaded <laughs> oh, it. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, I was like, and each one has like 300,000 views. Like wow. you can find this movie for free. Oh like if you want to watch this movie, you'll, you can find it. They might even pay you to watch it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That might explain why so many of the kids know about it. As the auto plays to the next thing, chances yeah. are you're going to hit it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 A lot of, a lot of uh, people that have been watching Minecraft videos are really into weird animation. Oh, if you told me this was made in like Roblox or Minecraft, I'd believe you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're going to go all the way back to, you know, to ground us to make it all connect here. After the abyss... In 1989. So uh, James Cameron starts his new production company in 1990, Lightstorm Entertainment. This is still his company. A subsidiary of uh, Food Fight, Inc. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, He starts this company with a producer by the name of Lawrence Kazanoff. Kazanoff leaves in 93 to create his own company, Threshold Entertainment. They are primarily in animation and special effects studio so (laughs) kazanov has a varied career uh producing things (laughs) like true lies awesome james cameron but stuff like ghoulies go to college (laughs) so a lot of b-movie crap okay Okay. and he is the producer on all live action 
adaptations of Disney, the Disney live action adaptation of a film series you guys wanted me to talk about over and over. Mortal Kombat? Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat. Oh my God. <laughs> this is the closest we're ever going to get. No. This is the closest he we're ever going to get talking about Mortal Kombat. He, Threshold and him, he holds the rights to any live action version of Mortal Kombat. Wow. So again, he has produced every single version that you can think of. I unironically loved the one that came out two years ago. Absolutely. <laughs> Me too. Oh, Hell Me yeah. too, <laughs> yes. So um, 97's Mortal Kombat, Annihilation. Annihilation, the, which he has a story credit on. Okay. L- look, and then there was base- the uh, Mortal Kombat TV series that they had. Yeah. And that, that short. That was like on YouTube. Yeah, oh, that, and the, that the, led the, to the, the most machina- recent movie. The, well, they had the mach- so they had the short that that the director of the Machinima series did as a pitch. Yeah. Okay. Anything live action, oh my he God. has to be. And then involved. the newest 2020. Yes. Oh my God. I can wow. now. I mean, based on the quality of the visual effects in Mortal Kombat exactly. Annihilation, I can see it. I can see it. I yeah. think he's my new favorite person. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Like the dragon, the dragon at the end of Mortal Kombat Annihilation was like food fight quality graphics. Absolutely, oh my God, really? I never saw Annihilation. <laughs> oh, oh, it's oh. the great. You the best. pretty much did. You gotta watch it. Food fight. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but um, that, I mean, it does explain some things, right? Yes. However, I'm going to say that Mortal Kombat Annihilation is amazing, and you should watch it. <laughs> okay. Highly recommend. I did like the first one when I was a kid. <laughs> first one is still not bad. I love the first one. I mean, it's really cheesy and stupid, but it's I love still it so fun. much. Remember when Johnny Cage punches Goro in the balls? <laughs> yeah. It's the best. <laughs> Down in the splits. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Food fight. In 1999, oh. Kazanoff oh, and God. Joshua Wexler, Threshold's chief interactive officer, whatever that job is, are thinking about <laughs> Toy Story. And oh, Jesus. this is Kazanoff thinking about what kind of movie they would want to make. So thinking about Toy Story, Kazanoff says, I'm fascinated by worlds that are wholly different worlds when you turn your back. You know, like the grocery store. <laughs> okay. I wonder what all these brands get up to whenever I leave so, the grocery aisle, <laughs> said no one ever. So Kazanoff and Wexler really latch on to the idea that Mr. Potato Head and Etch-A-Sketch are in the movie of Toy Story, right? Mm -hmm. Real brands. Right. Why not do a whole movie based on brands? (laughs) According to Kazanov, brand mascots are on the same level as celebrities. In the digital world, you're hard-pressed to tell the difference between Mr. Clean and Arnold Schwarzenegger. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what that means. I'll clean your back. (laughs) Like maybe maybe Bruce Willis? Like he he's, bald? He, I like, think he's going on recognizability. Yeah, he's saying like Mr. Clean is as recognizable and as much of a household name as Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay. Which like okay, look. Maybe. This guy's a fucking maniac obviously, <laughs> but like I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt here and say that like we were throughout that whole movie going like, oh, it's the Vlasic Pickle Stork, and oh, it's Twinkie the Kid, and oh, it's blah, blah, blah. Yes. Like, like you, it's the Hawaiian Punch guy. Like, yeah. you do recognize those characters. Yes. Yeah. Okay. There's, there was, there were a ton. I'm just like, what the fuck is that? Yeah, same. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I feel like they got a lot of the budget brands. Oh, there. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like the, 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 the flying squirrel. The Wayne Brady chocolate. Oh, that's that was so, so those are some some of them character. are all original characters. Okay, because I was yes. like, what the hell is that? Yeah. Announced in 2001 to be released in a year and a half, Threshold <laughs> Threshold got 25 million from an from American investors, oh my. and another oh my 25 God. million from a Korean company. So the, all of these people are like, yeah. Money towards this. In this oh my god! This looks like one of those Korean reenactment videos. It does. It does. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Uh, despite never directing anything before, no. Larry Kazanoff <laughs> will direct the film. <laughs> I did look up. He has one other directing credit. He directed the first stage production of Mortal Kombat. <laughs> I want to see this. <laughs> like Mortal Kombat like, the musical? It was like a fourth grade class. <laughs> Mortal Kombat Live. Yeah, one of those. Yeah, yeah, one of those things like they did back in the day. <laughs> or still do. Get over here. Get over here. <laughs> <laughs> Fatality. Fatality. <laughs> it would probably be like the, the play in Finish Adam's him. Family. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
they're, the, or they're <laughs> just like splurting blood all yeah. over the crowd. Oh Amazing. no, Goro, he's got four arms. <laughs> I would 1,000% watch this. I would 100% too. Actually. So the animation style for Food Fight was to mimic Looney Tunes. I don't I, think there's anything <laughs> even close to this animation style that exists in the world. Aside from the logic. Because at first I was like, why would he crash his plane every day and be alive? But that is Looney Tunes. <laughs> that is yeah, Looney maybe. Tunes. Yeah, yeah. Um... Okay, so Kaz- Kazanoff stakes the future of Threshold on this film. He is imagining toys, sequels, TV spinoffs, video oh games, God. and even theme parks. Oh, Lord. He says, for us, this is Casablanca. <laughs> <laughs> it is not. Oh. Oh. I love this guy. <sighs> oh, Larry. <laughs> Does he go by Larry? Can I call him Larry? Uh, I think that's what it was in the credits. Yeah. Okay. In June of 2002, Kazanoff is interviewed by Animation Magazine and uh, gives us an update on how well this movie is going. Okay. We've got the movie. We've got the property, the place, the equipment, the talent. We're there. Do we believe our next movie, Food Fight, is going to be a huge hit? Of course we do. We think it's great. We've gotten an amazing response to it. I've told people all over the world and we're getting uniform reaction to it. We're betting a ton that it's going to be a great movie. Oh, we're risking more on this movie than any other venture I've ever been involved in in my life. Famous last words. <laughs> oh, I just feel so bad right now. I know. I feel it's so bad like... for Larry. <clears throat> yeah. I'm so happy this movie exists. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. Like, I kind of am too, but this is the best. <laughs> I'm happy the story of this movie exists. Yeah. Yeah. Like watching it, I was like, "Oh my god, I have such a headache." I'm but gonna I... watch it again someday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> After Come you've on. had time to like mentally prepare yourself. One of our friends was like, "I am not high enough to watch, to watch this. this." I was just gonna say, "I was like, I'll probably pop a couple gummies, yeah. pop the sucker on, and I'll just have a great night." I told them it was god tier awful. <laughs> oh, god. Well, you were texting me last night that you were saying, was this worse than The Conqueror? And I was like, I don't know, that's a tough choice. But then Ray was like, it's oh, not a tough choice. It's, it's not. It's 10,000 times 10, worse. It is times And worse. in hindsight, like, I'm, I'm, I'm inclined to agree with you. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll talk about the, the okay. quality at the end. Christmas <laughs> of 2002. What do you think happened? Another much better similar movie came out. Hmm. Oh, was that one the Sausage Fest movie? Oh, no, that one was Oh, low. Sausage Party? Sausage Party, yeah, Sausage Fest. But that was Fest. much later, wasn't it? Yeah, much later. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a show. So, okay, so you said December- 2016. That was 2016? Mm. So December 2002, something happened that put uh, gum in the works. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Nothing that has happened before on our show. <laughs> what? <laughs> Um, D- did you get this spoiled for you? No. Okay. Well, shit, man. I don't know. All their hard drives were stolen. Holy Ooh. shit. Were they in the same <laughs> vault that Tommy <laughs> Lee and <laughs> Pamela was <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, I think secretly someone just like burned them. Ka- they stole them and burned them. Kasanov calls it an incredibly complex crime and industrial espionage oh my god because so many people just needed to get their hands on this amazing John Lasseter's like <laughs> <laughs> run away yeah. you'll never copy Toy Story <laughs> not while I'm alive he leaves behind a Hawaiian shirt it's like, it's like <laughs> he's calling hmm, who is this yeah <laughs> I wonder a who very could have taken toy. the hard drives um well because it's theft of intellectual property uh Secret Service <laughs> had to look into it oh wow <laughs> Jesus and Christ. the case went unsolved. No one was caught, but Threshold was insured for this. Dun dun dun. Cliffhanger. No. Uh, what's the word? Foreshadowing. Y'all. Foreshadowing. Oh. Okay. Oh god. Digitally speaking, Food Fight had to start from scratch. So we could have gotten something completely different. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mm, okay. But if like the story's true. Better is questionable. Yeah. It's like <laughs> would it have been better? Hmm. Okay. So <laughs> that's why I, that's why I said different. different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
This is going to explain a lot of this movie. Because they're redoing everything, Kazanov uses this opportunity to capitalize on new technologies, specifically motion capture I was just and say facial mo- capture. I was going to say motion oh capture, yeah. Oh my God. Both being outsourced to different companies. So throughout production, Kazanov never established timelines or pipelines for approval. And he clearly didn't understand the technology they were using. Multiple people say that he assumed if you were using a computer, therefore you are an expert on all things. So he like he didn't know the difference between modeling and texturing. So well, you're one of those 3D artists. You can do all the things, right? Yeah, just do it. Why and are then you doing it? Every single artist went. <sighs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's five people, sir. That's five people's jobs. Um. He didn't seem to understand that motion capture and Looney Tunes animation are two very different things. (laughs) So Yeah, Mel Blank not only did the voices, but the motion capture. (laughs) (laughs) Coyote uh, every time he fell off a cliff. (laughs) You just see him in a ball suit. (laughs) Ain't I a stinker? (laughs) Getting shoved off cliffs. (laughs) Um, So uh, for, I guess... To explain, like Looney Tunes is the very exaggerated things where people run off the screen, but their head stays on and then then their head goes, that kind of stuff. The squash and stretch nature of it all, which yeah, is not like in not... this movie at all. I know that weasel made right. me real yeah. uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, my God. We'll we need like... to talk about this weasel for 45 straight <laughs> minutes. I have a okay. lot to say. So <laughs> animators would work on making some of the movements more exaggerated. So they would get the motion capture and then they would like start doing the stretches to kind of make it work. But they're like, this is not exactly that easy because you're working off of a very rigid human body for right. dogs and uh, uh, bendy weasels. weasels. Oh <laughs> okay, I, I need to ask a really important question. Maybe you'll get into it later. But did the actual actors who did the voices also do the motion capture? As far as I know, no. Okay. Because based off of this story right here, um, I th- I think they recorded their voices and they walked away. And for those, Thank you can God. look up. <laughs> I, I don't really have it in my notes, but this cast includes Charlie Sheen, Hilary Duff, Christopher Lloyd. Eva Longoria. Eva Longoria. Wayne Brady. Yeah, Wayne Brady. Larry, Larry Miller. Miller. Like, he was the highlight of the movie, by the way. Yeah, he was. He actually was. Yeah, he seemed like he was the only one like improving or like having yeah. fun with his yeah. character. Was he the bat? Yeah. 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 Okay. That was yeah. I loved that scene. It was great. <laughs> it Are was... you chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so he would um, the the animators would work on like making him more exaggerated, but it's like just that just doesn't doesn't work that way, right? So Kazanov is looking at it and he didn't like it, so he would request reshoots with the motion capture so then he would have to out tell the the company again Mm -hmm. hey can you do this again in motion capture and so and then he probably says exaggerate it (laughs) yeah which is why christopher lloyd's character like the guy like like having a seizure (laughs) (laughs) just oh i felt when you guys were asking me like ideas for a drinking game and i just the first thing that came to mind is like take a drink every time you feel sorry for christopher lloyd (laughs) (laughs) i felt so bad like i was watching this like but we would be dead on the floor yeah i mean not really he's barely in it yeah Yeah. that's true but that part where he's walking into the store and it was just that looks like a motion capture person being told be exaggerated be weird right (laughs) I, I just watched I Monty Python's meet... sketch about uh, <laughs> the, the silly, silly walks. Silly walks. <laughs> I'm going to put that in. <laughs> yeah. I, I need to meet the person, though, who is able to walk like that. Because it was <laughs> it defied the laws of physics, yeah. is what it did. Well, now I'm thinking about it's crazy. The Lady X and how many times her her legs are like... Like spread apart. Spread apart. How many like <laughs> that... weird crotch shots there are in this fucking movie? Yeah, that was actually something you could have told us. Like you, you should <sighs> take a take a drink anytime there was an upskirt shot. An upskirt or a <laughs> yeah, <crotch> yeah. shot. <laughs> there are a lot of them. Um, that though, and the the squirrel Dan Daredevil Dan or whatever, I could not get over how he was constantly moving. Yeah. 
I, like and I said to Ian, yeah. I was just like, that's so much more animation than you need. And so now it makes sense that it's mocap because like no animator would be like, I'm just going to add frames. Yeah, like, yeah. Exactly. Fu- like that's in- like Ryan. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. I, I, when I was watching that, I, it makes sense now that you say that they got the, their wires crossed on what they need to exaggerate. Yeah. Because I was just watching that like, is the actor just standing there <laughs> like a flailing uh, inflatable? What's that called? Man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they like, just put the mocap that? balls on the yeah. an inflatable tube <laughs> yeah, man. They just had him do that. That's what it looked like. He just, yeah, he kept jumping and he kept <laughs> shaking his arms. Kept jumping, kept shaking his arms. Every Seriously. other word he had to accentuate with his wiggles. <laughs> yeah. His wiggles. Which is so, so, so much more work. Yeah, exactly, right? For an animator. So, yeah, it, yeah I guess his mocap, that was probably a nightmare to clean as a mocap person. Too. Exactly. And, but it, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you could, you saw the movie. It's not very clean <laughs> at all, oh, right? No. And, and, but this, this feedback loop would just go on and on where he would be like, instead of just having an animator just take the scene and animate, do their job, he'd be like, reshoot it with more motion capture. And it would just, Perpetu- perpetual just like starting over starting over yeah. starting over Ooh. so did anybody else feel uncomfortable i mean probably yes the, the, the dog. i had a heart on the whole time <laughs> <laughs> yeah but like with, with like dex's fingers the dog's fingers like the, oh, i don't I was, know if i noticed oh my god i like like every time I, I I was watching it and his fingers like showed up, I just I like act physically like, like, <laughs> like shiver. I was like, oh my god! Creep- I, I mean, there's a lot of creepy. That's how I felt about the weasel. So I yeah, don't think yeah. I noticed the dog fingers. Weasel? You mean the walking penis? Yes. <laughs> yeah, weird. Literally, we were the whole time we were calling him Greasy Dick Weasel because because <laughs> he was. Why was he so wet? <laughs> and he was always standing like he was about to <laughs> probe something. Yeah. Oh my! He good. kept going in between people's legs. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> when that character first showed up, we all went, what the fuck is, is that? Happening? And it took us like a whole scene to realize it was supposed to be a weasel. And I was like, that's a dick. Like, sorry, I don't. The name's Throbbing the Weasel. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Oh my God. Was... The, the internet, a lot of the internet calls him the poop weasel. Uh, I mean, okay, but. It's a dick. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't see any motion capture in that character at all. <laughs> I mean, I fucking hope not, <laughs> <laughs> because that person would have to like go to the hospital after yeah, that. Yeah, they just put all the mocap balls on an erect penis. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just had to shake it around. It's a, it was a penis. We got up. it. Do a real slow thrust. It'll be his inquisitive look. <laughs> now, now wrap the head in a curly cue. <laughs> More towards now have the camera. More towards the camera. Now have it go underneath your legs and between your balls. <laughs> it's, just, it's like puppetry of the penis that act oh, from, from like, Vegas. Now you got to get hit by a train. We're gonna <laughs> smack it around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! You got a fluffer for it. <laughs> In the credits, that was the best boy. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was the. the gr- I thought that was the grip. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> they work together. They work together. <laughs> oh my god! Oh. The mm-hmm. best boy's crying. Someone get the grip. <laughs> <laughs> I went to school for this. And Larry's like, "Do it again." <laughs> More Gre- greasy. And send me the footage. Time. Greasier than. <laughs> Yeah, yeah more, it's more, more shine. wet. Oh. <laughs> Should look more wet. Oh, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a I'm a mocap actor. Oh, you done anything recently or anything that I've seen? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> How much are you on the internet? Yeah. <laughs> Need a stunt cock? <laughs> um, now, the company doing the facial capture was very basic. It required the actors to never move their heads. They could only stare forward. Which explains why the characters never seem to be looking at anything. Or emoting at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Again, I don't think the actors did it. I think someone probably just mouthed f- for it. For right, them. right. Um, but that explains why the, like, the, there's that dead-eyed look where they're mm-hmm. just like looking off in the distance. and Especially Sunshine. It's most obvious with her. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I was thinking more Dan, uh, the squirrel, Dan. Oh, oh yeah. Because he was just like, because he's moving so much and uh-huh. his eyes are just... Like he's never looking at Dex. Yeah, like, that's true. Yep. Yeah, um, they stared into my soul <laughs> and took something. And Sunshine's <laughs> eyes are just barely looking apart, so she looks really <laughs> creepy, dead-eyed. Yeah. 
So, Kazanoff would frequently walk around the studio giving generic notes such as it needs to be 30% better or more awesome. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Ryan, as an as an animator, as a, as a creator, as a creator, right? If someone because you work for yourself. Yeah. Let's say you didn't, right? And right. someone came up to you. You're doing the same stuff you're doing now, right? Yeah. And someone comes up to you and says, it needs to be 30% more better. awesome, or 30% better. I would do nothing for five hours, show it to them again, and they would think it was better. Okay. <laughs> That's usually the case. <laughs> Which is, I'm assuming, what happened here also. Right? Would not be surprised. Okay. In 2004, Kazanoff does an interview with the New York Times to drum up press about the movie and the company. And he brags that they are the only animation company in the world that does movies, TV shows, direct-to-video movies, and theme park attractions. Um, and they want to join the ranks of Pixar and DreamWorks. Kazanoff touts their frugal production methods. <sighs> <laughs> and they should be adopted, and that they should be adopted by other studios. <laughs> I just need to say, like, can you imagine if this is how animation was? Like, if everybody was just like, yeah, this is the gold standard. This is what we're adopting. They did it very frugally. And like, this is what animation looks like. Like, what would. Meaning um, like if for like Food forever. Fight worked. <laughs> yeah, well, just like if, if everyone just decided like, yeah, that's what it looks like. Like, we're staying in the early 2000s and like we're forever. never progressing oh, beyond that. God. Like, oh, my God. Uh, okay, so Kazanoff says, we do not want the 200,000 square foot facility because the day you build it is the day you can't say no to any job. This is the future of digital entertainment. You no longer have to live in Hollywood to work in Hollywood. Sure. I like the sentiment. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> theoretically, that makes sense. This but you still nice. need people who know what the fuck they're doing. Exactly. Yeah, true. Kazanoff is there uh, during this interview to proudly claim that the movie would have 80 products and brands. Oh! Um, from New York Times, it does have a clever script, some Hollywood heavyweights, high-powered technology, and a wildly, even globally, known cast. So, mm -hmm. like... <laughs> yes. That's not a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this... Oh, never mind. I don't want to break the timeline because I did spoil when it came out. <laughs> okay. But I have a comment about the timeline. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> production is 15 months from completion. They're about halfway done. Okay, see, this the more is 2004. We're see, I, see, I guess 2005. So the more we're getting closer, the more I'm getting nervous that I'm going to be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, <sighs> Kazanoff likes to, he was bragging about the 130 speaking roles, 340 locations. And the computing power to render 15,000 characters at once. Did they ever get to the rendering phase? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't this just the previous? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, okay, there weren't 130 role, speaking roles. There, how exactly do you have 340 locations in their supermarket? Um, and most of them took place on that fucking unrendered street. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. That for some reason at the end of it was that Copa Banana Co <laughs> nightclub. And then if yeah. you look at if you look at the in that shot, there's nothing else behind it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. the the very blurry sky block it's just sky shapes. box. Yeah. Just shapes. Everything is just shapes after a point. <laughs> <laughs> and the, and then, I, then so when the 15,000 characters at once, I was sitting there like, yeah, when you have the crowd and it's three char characters over and multiplied. Over again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and then that and then I was also like that moment, that very jarring cut to all the people in the grocery store and oh, all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the humans were Whoa. horrifying. <laughs> what was that walk? <laughs> They're all doing the same weird robot walk. <laughs> yeah. That was freaky. Um, okay. When asked if the film is entirely one long product placement, Kazanoff points out that the main, main characters are new, but... If you're 11 years old, and I'm going to make you believe this is real, you have to see something that you're familiar with. So... And I have to convince your parents to go spend money. So... His, I mean, every kid loves Charlie the Tuna. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, right? What? Like, <laughs> it's like this... It's this... 
Like, okay. Chiquita banana lady. <laughs> yeah. Don't Mrs. Need, Butterworth. You don't need to know that a, a car is a Toyota, right? right. A car no. looks like a car. But, yeah. <laughs> like, why? Like, that reasoning alone makes it just seem like this was all just a fucking ploy. I mean, literally, Toy Story completely just breaks down that comment. Like, <laughs> yeah, because exactly. Woody, Woody and Buzz weren't real toys. Yeah, it wasn't nothing. Yeah, like, yeah, Barbie and Ken were in there and there was like some toys, like you said, like Etch-A-Sketch and Mr. Mr. Potato, Potato Head yeah. and stuff. But like I but that's because those are like actual real things that like kids play with and care about versus yeah. like they don't notice brands on a box at the grocery yeah, they store. Don't give a shit. Like they don't give a shit. Oh, I love Fruit Loops. Oh, why you like taste them? No, that toucan. <laughs> toucan <laughs> I, fucking he's, he's, Sam. He's awesome. As I base I base all of my purchases based on uh, Ike's. <laughs> Oh, can we? Okay, can we talk talk about about Ike's? Yeah, so they kept calling the brand characters Ike's, Ike's. and I was like, "The fuck is that?" Did you guys catch it? Is it? it, Does it? Is it explained in the movie? No, it is not explained. Okay, I had to ask you. Like, like when they had that 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 epic battle, uh, I air quoted with my eyes. (laughs) Um, I heard it. I came across. Uh, they kept like, "There's only a few Ike's left." I was like, "What the." Snake. <laughs> yeah, it, I, it kept I, saying, did, and they said it a lot in the beginning. Yeah, I was like, did yeah. I miss that? They, but they never explained it. They just were like, "These are called Ikes," and we're just like, uh, "What?" Icons, and I only got that from the articles. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> so the brand icons. I I don't. Know. Oh, that's like why? M- m- like why not mascots? Mascots. Yeah, yeah like I don't know, but it it just feeds into to that idea yet again of like. <laughs> I mean, we'll go into the at the end, but like, like the very capitalist nature of this whole film. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Guess who really loves the idea of this movie? Charlie Sheen. No. Oh. Guesses. I mean, oh, who would love oh, Larry it? John John Lasseter. No. Oh. Who no. would love the idea? Oh, of this? like some CEO of like. General Mills, or yes, whatever the fuck. Brands, like brands, brands love this. Yeah, of so course. this is this is, Clint's going to be our brand people. This okay. is Mark Mills, president of a product placement company. <laughs> the movie looks wonderful. Should I do like that? No. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> the movie looks wonderful. Threshold will be considered to be the new and upcoming Pixar. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, now keep in mind. Uh, IBM puts a major stake into Threshold, just like hoping that this helps them get it like a foot into uh, Hollywood. Into animation? Yeah, all of that, okay. right? <laughs> Which explains that very enormous product placement where they're sitting in front of the computer and then <laughs> the fuck like Dex just starts like waving his He's hands like in front of a waving his saber. wiggly sausage fingers <laughs> yeah. that made me physically ill. <laughs> Uh, Procter and Gamble is super excited to promote the movie on all their products. <laughs> so you really want <sighs> Squirrely Dan? <laughs> Squirrely Dan. <laughs> Whatever the fuck is. Oh, Daredevil. Daredevil, Daredevil Dan. Dan. <laughs> Daredevil Dan. What on was, your toilet paper. <laughs> and your what toothpaste. was his? What was his product? <laughs> we don't know. Our guess was some kind of like chocolate. Chocolate nuts. Nuts. <laughs> Choco nuts, like chocolate bar with nuts, because oh he God. kept making j- references about like. Hey, how about some chocolate frosting on that baby? <laughs> like when he was catcalling all those yes. women. Yes, oh, that is so yeah. bad. Cringy. And then, and then there was like the awkward like tension between him and the Count Chocula ripoff, yeah. where he was like, <laughs> "Hey, are you made of chocolate?" <sighs> like, <laughs> I like you on my back. Yeah. Or whatever he says to him. <laughs> yeah, it was just like so homoerotic. And, I loved it in though. like the weirdest way. Um, <laughs> oh God. So, so so we think some kind of chocolate, but I'm not sure what kind. Because Dex's product was even questionable. Oh yeah. No oh, he's cinnamon name. cereal. Oh yeah, that was right off the bat. That was he's oh, like a cinnamon. Okay. He's I like a cinnamon too. toast crunch cereal. Oh gotcha. Which no, it was. He was the cinnamon sleuth. Oh, yeah, cinnamon okay. sleuth okay. Yeah. cereal gotcha. or something okay. like that. Okay. I, Which she was like, okay. He was just a rip off of McGruff, right? That's I know, what, but that's much. what Lisa thought. She's like, why is McGruff in this movie? Yeah, that's what I thought too. This is Amy Donges from Procter and Gamble. The food fight graphics are absolutely amazing. Comparable to Pixar's, it's even more real life. Oh my god! <laughs> okay, comparison's sake. This is 2004. These are the 3D animated films that came out in 2004: The Incredibles, ah. Shark Tale, Polar Express, Shrek 2. Yeah, no, this is not even close. Um, 
this is Mike Red from Hostess. In my mind, Twinkie the Kid takes on almost a kind of sheriff's role. He's there to fight the good fight. No, he's barely in it. Is he? <laughs> he's, I saw no. him once and it was only like half of his body as he's standing on top of a building. Yeah. And like the only reason I knew it was Twinkie the Kid is because of the hat and the scarf. Yeah. yeah. And the Twinkie. Yeah. And he I mean, was a Twinkie. I mean, he just kind of looked like a yellow turd, but. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> he wasn't wet enough. <laughs> this is a turd wearing a shirt. You mean the hat scarf. that said Twinkie the Kid was what <laughs> like, gave it away? Yeah, right. <laughs> That's the only reason. Um, brands weren't paid for the rights. Um, and what? Threshold maintained creative control. What? Yeah, I know. How did so, that work? Because they were like, it's just free advertising. advertising. And they can sit there and just put all that shit marketing on everything that they already have. So for them, it was just free publicity. But did they see the movie? <laughs> yeah. This is wild. I, I, I think, like I said, I think they all just signed on. They were sold a bill of goods. And we're just so blinded by that money, like, and who they didn't give a shit. Like, it was just they just they, drove they, a dump truck of money full to my house. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, not made, made of stone. <laughs> the, the, uh, they they probably looked at what like Mr. Potato Head and saw Etch a Sketch, like sales just like jump up, yeah, from Toy Story or some bullshit. And hosted needed those sales. Yeah, like it's it's crazy. So dealing with the brands was logistically stupid. Um, remember Blues Brothers where we talked about- Oh, the, I remember Blues the Brothers. The stores in the mall mm. and how they were like, yeah, oh, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah, can yeah. use our store, but you can't run a car through it. Yeah. That kind of bullshit. Right. We don't, we don't want it to look like it's very easy to destroy our stuff with yeah. a car. <laughs> um, so Mr. Clean uh, originally was uh, being beaten up. He was like, oh, I'm all manly. And then like a, a wimpy character came up and like beat him up. And that was supposed to be like ironic. And they were like, no, sorry. Like, Mr. Clean can't be beat up by a wimpy character. He has Mr. to be a strong Clean. leader. Yeah. He can't get his hands dirty. <laughs> <laughs> um, he just like walked around for like three scenes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. so they were they were just like, he couldn't get his hands dirty. He couldn't be beat up by a wimpier character. So therefore he just like stood in the background. And therefore he just like He's left just... the battle and, and cowered yeah. somewhere, is what yeah, I'm assuming. Basically. So uh Angel Soft Toilet Paper demanded that their angel baby never leave its cloud. Um, or that little Debbie couldn't be cat called by Daredevil Dan. <laughs> so mm-hmm. my Do guess... we see these characters? No. <laughs> like all those other sluts in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> They're fine with all them being cut cat called. Um but not okay. little Debbie. We're gonna we'll go into like cut stuff. Hold on. Like... I need to say though for a second. So you just mentioned like the angel baby, toilet paper baby, and little Debbie. I do not remember them in this That's movie. That's what you're just all. saying. Yeah. Like there we'll we'll go into ne- some cut stuff okay. a little bit later. All right. Um and for the person that made that one comment, yes, you have to drink every time I say that. When I say we'll talk about it we'll later. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> <laughs> <And it's> like, <laughs> Okay, in oh, 2005, yeah. another company, Story Arc, sees what they're doing and gladly gives them another 20 million. And then, uh, like, saw with their eyes what they were doing. <laughs> <laughs> so this is already at 70 million. Yes. Okay. This was an expensive movie. Uh, when Lionsgate, every, every dollar's on that screen. <laughs> <laughs> when Lionsgate becomes their new distributor, um, randomly. Spotted at E3, the video game conference, in 2006, a booth shows off Food Fight, the video game. Nothing on the internet other than that (laughs) exists. By 2007, the film isn't done and Lionsgate gets pissed and leaves. Right. Sometime around 2010, Story Arc pulled some investor insurance card thing that said that Threshold was wasting their money and their insurance company was put in charge of production, forcing the movie to the finish line as quickly and as cheaply as possible. I don't know what that means exactly. Does that mean the animators are still there and the, the there's a guy standing behind him going like, chop, chop, like, no, yeah, okay, print, print, you know, send it. Or, no, you don't need to render that. Yeah. 
yeah, oh, that exactly. texture looks fine. Yeah, <laughs> that greasy ass weasel looks yeah. great. So basically, so, a bunch of pencil pushers were like, yes, just trying get to this done. save money. Uh, or, yeah. or they were the ones that they went, were doing. They went get out of the way. It. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so this is six years, seven years into production on this. Uh, we're at nine years. Nine years. Okay, so like. I I would like to know how much time they actually were working on this. <laughs> like, I get that you can put out a shitty thing in nine years, but there's like nothing done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like in nine years. So, so there there is something to say that there. I don't know how many of them at Threshold were actually working on it. They were doing other things, side stuff. They did like Bionicle movies, lots of Lego stuff. Um, so they were doing side gigs. So there was stuff getting done there, but I don't know how many people are actually working on this fucking thing. Like that is literally the quality of something you rush out in six months. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yes. So the the insurance company takes over. In 2011, the movie falls into receivership, a form of bankruptcy. So uh, like movies are movies the the way the movies are made they're they are, they establish them as their own company. company so this allows hollywood to get away with a lot of bullshit but so it falls under receivership and guess what happens the next thing again never happened on this podcast before maybe one of the creative <laughs> differences <laughs> Um, they end up kidnapping some of the cast <laughs> and taking their passports. No. They start over one more time. <laughs> the movie goes up for auction. Oh wow! Holy <laughs> shit! So wait, now what? What does that mean exactly for for for, for those other who, who don't know? I mean, I know, but just uh, why don't you tell everybody else? I mean, it's, so it's like a like yeah, when your house gets foreclosed on because you can't pay your mortgage, and then it goes to auction, and then people basically are able to like bid on your house for like a low low price but it's like a movie like your house is a movie so let's just say like there's a fictional like auction house and there's like uh, here's a vase and then here's a painting here's Here's the rights to to this this movie and every finished film and everything that's come with it yeah like not just like the rights or the names or anything but like here's like the actual all the assets you get your very own Charlie Sheen (laughs) (laughs) Uh, winning (laughs) two duff sisters that's right. Not just one. Two duffs for the price of one. <laughs> Two duffs for one. Uh, starting bid <laughs> call, of... Call the double duff. You can call yourself duff man. <laughs> <laughs> I own the duffs. <laughs> starting bid for the f- film, 2.5 million. Wow. <clears throat> An English company <laughs> wins the auction. I'm not sure how much. Uh, you mean like but, a British company? Yeah. Okay. Like, so this, this, some guy was just, some English, this British okay. guy was just some, like. Some British lord is like, mm, yes, I'll buy that. <laughs> yes. Well, I do find that rather amusing. <laughs> Maybe I'll look I, in the old. It features my. I can't, I can't imagine that many people were bidding I'll see audience. if I have 2.5 million in the old pocketbook. <laughs> the old coffers. <laughs> uh, this uh, actually <laughs> getting your old Charlie Sheen kind of makes sense. Uh, this this is the same year that Charlie Sheen has his very public meltdown. In That's 20- what I was gonna bring up. Like, <laughs> oh, in twenty eleven. Yeah. What a weird uh, timing, <laughs> right? <laughs> Maybe that's what triggered it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I gotta work, say, I worked so hard on that movie. But no one wants it. <laughs> I did so much performance capture. <laughs> Charlie My Sheen's hands. delivery in that movie is as if he was sitting on the couch <laughs> reading it to himself and they put the mic in front of him. Yeah. Oh, we commented <laughs> multiple right, times. Read. There were a couple lines that Larry Miller did where I was like, was he recording this on like his iPhone in the car? <laughs> like, did they just, someone just email him and like, hey, Larry, we got a couple pickups. And he's yeah. just like, yeah, let me just bust these out. I'm like, <laughs> on just the, over the phone. Yeah, I'm sitting in my trailer waiting to shoot my the next thing. I'll just do this on my phone, my Nokia. <laughs> his Palm Pilot. Yeah. At the time. At the, at the time. Yeah. It's got his own stylus. <laughs> One of those like like actual tape tape recorders like ching, like yeah. just records it and, and then, then he like, mails them. He the mails tape. it to him. Yeah. He just chucks it out the window the, as he drives well, by. Well, the insurance company's like, yep, okay, cool. Get it done. The official answer, food fight, was released in 2000. 12. Oh, uh, I was closer. That's far too the late. The world did end in 2012. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was released in England for one week, making a total of 20 pounds. 
20,000. 20,000 pounds? 20,000 pounds. It was also released in Dubai and Russia. Okay. Great. The movie grossed How many a... rubles did it make? <laughs> <laughs> movie grossed a total just, just a of, of what? <laughs> Guesses on its total gross from those three places. Like 30,000 whatevers. Sounds right. Combined currencies. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just, uh, just, just because I want uh, uh, 40,000. One hundred and twenty thousand. Oh wow! Oh, it did better in Russia than we thought. <laughs> By far, the lowest of the grossing, lowest grossing movies that we've covered. I don't think it will be beat. Oh no, no. Mm. And it, and at this point, it had cost what, like seventy million? You said, yeah. And yeah, then, and then if you add the two point five million, yeah. did it really cost that, or is that just the money he got for it? Okay, we'll we'll get to that. <laughs> this sounds shady. The, the, we, oh, we'll, like get, we'll get to that. The hard we'll drives were stolen. <laughs> stolen. So okay, so three reviews from critics, none of them being of like a website of note, <laughs> um, and <laughs> over a thousand audience ratings. <laughs> Guesses on that amount. Percentage on Roger oh, I hope from it's like eighty-two percent fresh. <laughs> I'm gonna say it's like probably in like the in like the sixties, and but most of that is gonna be ironic, like people being for the just for the satirical. for the for the user, not yeah. for the critics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. critics for audience. For audience oh, okay, scores. for audience score, I think it's probably people are gonna like ironically like yeah, Love bump it. it up. That's yeah. what I was thinking. It's gonna it's gonna be certified fresh from the audience. <laughs> uh, it's only at ten percent. Oh, but most on, of people? most, oh, most of the are... positive reviews are absolutely in jest. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, okay, that kind of like uh, renews my faith in humanity. Yeah. <laughs> Some of them are just like, this movie was robbed at the Academy. <laughs> <laughs> um, for comparison, these were the 3D animated films of 2013. The Crude's Despicable Me 2, Frozen Monsters University. Hmm. Yep. Um, you can find all sorts of abandoned merchandise made from the mo- made for the movie, including plushies, no comics, way. and even those children's books that have the like audio buttons <gasps> on the side. <gasps> really? Sounds, you know. Oh, <laughs> we got to get one of these for the closet, right? You press one of the buttons, just uh, Daredevil Dan, just like s- sexually Cat harassing calling, yeah. some. Hey there, some, baby, <laughs> nice curves. You want some chocolate frosting on that? Yeah, <laughs> mommy, I'm scared. <laughs> yeah, seriously, <laughs> you should. You will be. Oh God. Uh... Okay, somewhere in all this, a trailer was released that kind of answers some questions. Does it? <laughs> That well, trailer sucked. But inside the trailers, we saw Chester the Cheetah. We saw S- Squash and Stretch, Looney Tune style cartoon. Um, we saw crowd sizes that actually looked like crowds. Lighting. Textures. Hair. Texture, yeah, like hair. Her, hair, <laughs> yeah. her hair looked realist, realistic. Emotion. I felt something other than fear and anger. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some you, you eyeballs were emoting. Yeah. yeah. And looking. Yes. Some different character designs. Oh, there are some early, um, you can find some early, uh, like, animation reels of some of the people that worked on this. And, like, uh, Dex was a human. Before he was a dog? Well, well kids don't want to eat cereal from, cereal from a human. Yeah, well, he that... looked like Humphrey Bogart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> eat my cereal, kid. <laughs> That's where the Casablanca That's... thing comes in. Maybe. Yeah. This is our Casablanca of the, grocery stores. He's a detective. Why does he look like Indiana Jones? Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense to, I guess, based on where we landed with Sunshine Goodness, because it, we were like, what is she? Is she a person? Is she a cat? Why is the cat lady the mascot for raisins? <laughs> oh, yeah. That was the creepiest line. It was so I weird. I love how you love my raisins. raisins. <laughs> I was like, excuse me? <laughs> well, and then the whole- also, she looks or like, what was, Yes, we, yeah. were, we were like, that's a child. <laughs> He's marrying a child. 80 brands. Remember 80 brands? Yes. And how you seven. didn't see any of those? <laughs> yeah. Uh, here's a list of every brand Kasanoff has mentioned in the press directly, but um, we're obviously cut. Trojan. <laughs> <laughs> Chester, Chester the Cheetah, Lipton T-Man, 
Brawny Paper Towel Man. They had a rip off Brawny Paper Towel Man. So guy. there was a two different there were two different things. One of them was a, uh, a lumberjack. Yeah. He it was, was like, a totally different brand, but those two were actual brands. But like it but looked, not the brawny. It looked but they like, weren't the brawny man. But uh. what was he though? He looked like a lumberjack. Was he like Montreal's version? <laughs> like a French Canadian lumberjack? From maple syrup. Yeah. Uh, I'll pull this up in a second. But uh Coca-Cola polar bears. Uh Uncle Ben. Count Chocula might explain. The weird off brand. The, the off brand one. Uh Alphabets. Mr. Pringle. Tricks Rabbit. Honey Bear. Chiquita Banana Lady. Uh, which might have been a replacement for the other one. Cocoa Puffs Bird, Honey Nut Cheerios B, Lucky from Lucky Charms, Lucky Charms. Captain Crunch, Angel Soft Baby, Little Debbie. Hmm. And lastly, M&M's, hmm. where one of them, like in this article, says the joke melts, that, melts that is reused in the movie. One of them uh, was to say that they had peanut envy. That was in the movie, wasn't it? I don't remember that. I remember I the melt either. in your mouth thing. Yeah. He says something about melt in your mouth, not in your hand, right? That honestly really surprises me that M&M's was, quote, supposed to be in this movie. Because I've got a friend who works directly with M&M as like an artist for like their mm-hmm. designs and things like that. And M&M is so strict. About what they so can do. particular about oh yeah their for products sure. brands yeah for sure yeah like, because shit like this can happen <laughs> yeah well that's why I was so shocked when you said that they didn't pay for any of these brands that they're right? just like wow this is great this is free advertising it's like even so like you got to be really fucking careful oh, yeah I don't want to use any of these products now no <laughs> I'm gonna go throw all my tuna fish away mm-hmm. yeah all my Hawaiian punch. All my prunes. All my greasy weasel. All my, greasy, all my cheese of the weasel, greasy dick weasel. Well, the thing to emphasize the fact, the, the idea in my head that he was just a giant walking dick was that when he was like showing off his, you opened the trench coat uh-huh. with all of his like bootlegged wares, like he was just seriously just a flasher, yeah. flashing himself because he was a, a big dick, walking yeah. dick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. Thinly veiled uh, dick jokes. Dinty Moore Lumberjack. Oh. I don't even know what Dinty Moore is. I don't soup. either. Soup? Ham yeah. soup. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and that <laughs> Ryan was... pulls it out of his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> and that was Hungry Man. To take us home, veering into absolute rumor territory. Multiple animators have shared a few stories on Reddit. So whether or not this is... So take this with a grain of salt. A huge... <laughs> of Morton of Eps, salt. Of Eps, yeah, Morton, Morton salt. salt. A huge grain of Morton Was salt. Was the Morton salt girl supposed to be in the movie? <laughs> and that's who was writing these. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't get in the final cut of the movie. <laughs> um, they say every problem is directly the fault of Kazanoff. Of course. Mm. I mean, that's just yeah, obvious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but he goddamn, pocketed... he can make a good Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> he pocketed seven million on the bu- of the budget. Jesus, man. Um, he burned down his mansion for insurance, claiming a mistake during motion capture research. This was and this and this is all rumor. What? We want to just yeah. This is oh this right. Is all I already salt. forgot you said rumors. I'm like <laughs> wow. <laughs> But I mean, Juice. but I mean, uh, and he was the one that deleted the hard drives. So I mean, it kind of a little bit like makes sense, right? Oh well, yeah, that this whole thing was like an insurance scam. A hundred percent. Like the amount of money he was getting, how long it took, the fact that they were never progressing. Yeah. That that like the hard drives were mysteriously stolen, but luckily they were insured for even more money. I was yeah. literally about to say, how did he think he'd get away with this? But then I was like, oh, yeah, he did. <laughs> he, got away with it. He, yeah. absolutely, he absolutely did. And it's not like he got uh, like blackballed. He just made a Mortal Kombat movie. Like, yeah. Even, uh, even yeah, after this, even after this movie, people were like, yeah, you can touch Mortal Kombat again. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he has the rights until he someone buys them off of him. Holy shit. Um. And lastly, Josh Wexler's script was for children, but Kazanoff was the one that added all the perverted jokes. More wow. cream, more, more more frosting jokes, mm, yeah, more, yeah. more, more that him, weasel. Make him cat call that. Yeah, I like that dick weasel. Put him in there. Yeah. Put him in there a little bit more. So as we no, just sunshine said. sunshine goodness, she should be younger. Make her younger. Yeah. You need some art inspiration. Louise. <laughs> Zip. 
<laughs> he has he has extremely wide hips. <laughs> um, okay, so as we just mentioned, that threshold is still in business, and Kaz not Kaz not produced the latest um, Mortal Kombat movie. Pulling it all together, I don't know if you guys noticed this or not. Larry Kazanoff was the voice of Cheezel the Weasel. Oh, Jesus oh, Christ. Of my fucking God. course Whoa. he was. <laughs> and motion capture. Yeah. He was the mocap dick. Yeah. They're like, ah, he's busting old Cheezel out again. <laughs> <laughs> slapping that thing around that was that, that weasel like i every time i think about a different character that made me uncomfortable like every time we talk about a different character like oh no that one made me most uncomfortable oh, oh by far absolutely by yeah. far it's so because he fucking the scene. weasel gets in your face a lot too it's like you, why get this dick out of my face <laughs> yeah this greasy poop like of a dick like you know the the fourth explanation for this movie which is that it was a big insurance scam actually that's the one i'm choosing to believe because i can't live in a world where this movie exists unironically and intentionally like deliberately and deliberately mm. i want that so bad though i can't <laughs> <laughs> i, I mean, can't it's called like, emoji the it. movie right yeah. Yeah. like i just that he had this he had this brilliant scheme where he's just like i'm gonna make a movie that's one big product p- placement i'm gonna get a fuck ton of money for it and then when he didn't have anything to show for it he accidentally misplaced the hard drives or whatever the fuck and then got like a big insurance payout. Like that's the story I'm choosing to believe because it's the only one that makes sense for why this absolute piece of hot garbage movie exists. I mean, why why else why else would it that be stolen? Like it yeah. wasn't it wasn't Lord of the Rings. It wasn't no. the, the next Batman movie. It was it, you know, it wasn't nobody gave a shit. Nobody even knew that it existed at this yeah. point. <laughs> like And and stolen is very specific because if they had just said like, oh, there was an issue and like the hard drives accidentally got erased lost. or they were yeah. lost, like that happened on Toy Story 2. Something happened and luckily like one of the people working on the movie happened to have it on her home computer or that fucking movie would have been gone. And you probably don't get an insurance payout if you just accidentally have like a hard drive malfunction. Yeah. But them being stolen is very specific. Espionage. I love the industrial espionage. Industrial animation espionage. Also (laughs) trying to think of stuff for Clint's closet that I could bring. I did bring stuff. Oh my gosh. Um, you brought us a bunch of food. Some <laughs> I thought about it. Fish. I was like, I, I was like, do I have any tuna? No, I brought these, <laughs> these, these pins that I have because they're mascots, but oh I have this, this pin of Ronald McDonald <laughs> from like 19, <laughs> that doesn't tell me, but it was made in Taiwan. Uh, and then this other one of McDonald's Monopoly with a Monopoly man. Oh, that's oh. fun. He's a little fun. Ah. But because Ed Asner has a voice in this, um, where was he? In Wait, the, I, think, I think he's the grocery store like owner, dude. Oh, uh, sure. It also I has have, two lines. I have my up pin because he was also an up. So I've got my grape soda, which is also a product, I guess. <laughs> the grape soda pin from up. The, 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 the badge. So yeah, so that that was from my cleanse closet because I, I was watching this movie. I was like, I'm really glad I don't have anything to relate to this <laughs> well, movie. Well, you didn't so. know you could until just now. <laughs> I know, but right? now you're going to get that whole, the cheesy dick weasel. <laughs> I think I saw that at the Adam and Eve store. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Do I have to ask? No. Was it worth it? No. No, absolutely not. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I don't even know what it was. (laughs) There there were so many moments where like, what is happening? What's happening? Why, why, like Daredevil Dan, like, like, Every time he's just shaking about, and you're like, you're yeah. you're, you're not listening to him because he's just disturbing. And then like his constant crashing of the plane thing, you're like, yeah. is he dead? Is he not dead? He or- never makes the loop de loop. They're trying no. to set up one of those things. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, they you mean the guy matter. that flies everywhere can't do a simple loop? And why is the loop important to this moment? Like. It wasn't actually necessary to the ending of the movie. They're like, he can't save us without the loop de loop. And it's like, you could have just flown just, straight. Just fine, yeah, yeah. I had the same thought. <laughs> yeah. Just I love it when a movie makes me feel something, right? Like uh-huh. Pixar makes me feel like all good inside, or like, you know, I, I cry at something sweet. You know, I like really scary movies because I can feel like, you know, an adrenaline rush of fear. But the emotions that this movie made me feel. Like I need to go see a therapist. Yeah. Like <laughs> fear. Need I need an. I need an adult to like fear, disgust, shame. Yeah, sh- shame. <laughs> shame for sure. Yeah. But I went to the grocery store right after that and <laughs> bought some Mister Clean and yeah, yeah, and tuna fish. I bought some cereal. Yeah, with some, cinnamon sleuths. Yeah, I bought some cinnamon sleuths. 
Oh. Yeah, it, it was 100% not worth not it. Not worth it. I, I've never been angrier at Ian mm-hmm. for giving me this homework. <laughs> I actively, I had a headache while I was while I was watching this. I was like, hold on, I gotta like just shut my eyes for a second and just like sit back on the couch and. <sighs> Look, hey, how about the good moments? I loved when that dude said we got filet mignons. Oh, filet mignons. Okay, I will give them filet mignons. That was great. Now, what the fuck was that, that moose? Unrendered. F- yeah, what was the moose? The moose had a great All that voice. Unrendered food I did, that was I sitting like on that voice, table. Yeah. Uh, but can we talk about the ultimate message of the film seems to be don't buy Kirkland brand. Generic, <laughs> like, generic like, brands Kirk? are Nazis. Like, that, that was my takeaway from this movie. Yeah. Is that conformity, like, what? Co- I had the conformity of generic <laughs> brands means that you're a fascist. Oh, dude. Also, <laughs> speaking of their, their USDA song. Yeah. Wasn't funny enough to be funny. And felt really creepy. <laughs> it was like you were singing some anthem for name brands. Yeah. It oh, was... yeah. No, it was so like, it was so such a like, just weirdly capitalist mes- message. Yeah. yeah, so weird. Like, like he was, I was thinking maybe it would just, okay, it's going to be take place in a grocery store and there's just going to be a bunch of brands. But like, the, yeah, like you said, if you don't buy name brand, you're a fascist. Yeah, if <laughs> like... you're a poor person who has to buy Kroger brand, <laughs> fuck you, you Nazi. <laughs> what? Like, what is this movie? What is this movie? If you don't pay thir- the 30% markup to buy a name brand, you're a fascist. Uh, pardon? Pardon yes. me? Sorry. And you're stomping on a perfectly good bag of chips. <laughs> <laughs> that weren't even open. I mean, we've talked a lot about the look of this movie and that it's actually insane. But like the story's not any better. Like the like the writing is shit. The story makes no sense. The dialogue is terrible. This actually would have been crazy if it was like a really good story because it would yeah, have, but looked like garbage. But yeah. it's just the whole thing's garbage. <laughs> like, like you're like if... you're invested into it. You're just like and then you'd be just kind of like then it would probably be just like be not as fun, right? It'd then be you'd be like, oh, that's cult just classic thing. Yeah, you just be like, mm, yeah. it's actually like it's just hard to watch. Yeah. And so then it would just land in this like just bad territory versus what it is, which is just fucking insane yeah <laughs> we i now want to have uh chat gpt write this a movie sequel. Mm-hmm. yeah food fight two, food fight food two. two. <laughs> and mid journey would actually <sighs> probably do a better job at the visuals to be yep. quite honest all right like, well that makes me think that cheesel the weasel was like L- larry kazanov kazanov's like he's like this is my brainchild and my contribution to the story is like this character, I'm gonna give him my voice, and he's gonna look like a greasy little dick weasel. It's just and, like, and, and I'm sure he thought that thing was gonna be hysterical. Yeah, like he he was so fun, and then it was just gonna make him all the money. Yeah, like that. It was just it, it would be the, this that breakout. This is the comic character. relief. He Every made... kid will have their own dick weasel <laughs> 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 right next to their potato head, and it's a yep. sketch. A dick weasel. Dick, I want my. Weasel I want kids figure. to go to sleep next to their dick weasel. They can cut it up to the weasel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh, children. Boy. Not worth it. Not worth it. Not even a little all. bit. But definitely go watch it on YouTube. Yeah, I mean it's free, so <laughs> it. I'm sure if you just get like, high and watch the shit out of it, I'm sure if you just fucking uh, insane. Yeah, and I'm sure if you just like <laughs> just click on any video at any time in YouTube and just let it auto play to the next one, you'll eventually get to <laughs> the this algorithm. Movie. Will there are a bunch of uh, all <laughs> food fight, but it's just the scenes with the weasel. Oh wow! Wait. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> make it happen. <laughs> Stuff of nightmares. Um, okay, I, I guess actually some f- like follow up questions. So somebody bought this movie at auction, released it, made like literally no money. Not even the two point five that the, they bought the, it for. Because that's the start. That was a starting bid. Yeah. We don't know how much they actually paid for it. Oh, is that how much yeah. they paid for? Nobody it? knows. I'm, I don't. Oh, okay. I have information about. Okay. It. But like literally, no one made their money back on this. Have they ever tried to like take down any of the free versions on YouTube or any? They're like, does just <laughs> no, no one give no, a shit? No one just Nobody cares anymore. It. They've been up for years. And they're just and, like whatever. It doesn't and like matter. I said, they have hundreds of thousands of views. Has okay? Has uh, Larry Kazanov said anything 
about like uh, the 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 about the it New post York's... like it's like YouTube kind of cult fame. No, so the when it finally came out, New York Times did like their their whole uh, article about the making of it, and they were like, we reached out to Kazanoff for uh, a quote or, or like or comment, comment yeah. and he said he couldn't because of legal reasons. <laughs> Wow. Because he's being investigated for insurance fraud. I can't answer the phone right now. My mansion's on fire. <laughs> As he's like doing a Scrooge McDuck backstroke in his like gold money pit. Yeah, seriously. My mansion's on fire. I thought you meant that's just how he talks. Like yeah. the characters. <laughs> yeah, he's My does. mansion's on fire. <laughs> Why are you moving so much? Hold still. <laughs> he did all the performance uh-huh. capture. Oh, him and his <laughs> dick. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. Yes. God, what a terrible movie. So we have some follow up from YouTube. I feel awkward reading this one, but I'm going to anyway. So Raymond. No, you no, you don't. You feel no, great. I put it on there. Ian, oh, okay. put, Ian put it on here, Clint. Raymond says, Ray is hilarious. <laughs> that is very we true. Need, we need some love for Ray. Some love for Ray. <laughs> all, the, all the fucking incels. Yeah. Why is the woman Why talking? Why is the woman talking? <laughs> Thank you, Raymond, for not being an incel. <laughs> um, all right. right. I mean, he is right, Ray. You're. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you so much. Really funny. On the Misleading Trailers episode, Almighty Tallest Red said, since Rapunzel is one of the more famous Brothers Grimm Grim Tales, Tangled was released as Rapunzel here in Germany, but they still used the same trailer. <laughs> so we were talking about how like they changed the title to appeal more to boys. Yeah, called it Tangled because but... boys wouldn't want to see a show yeah. called yeah. But German boys are just like, whatever, we don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll tug on that hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he I, don't know why, I don't know why I went all like Jersey with that. Uh, <laughs> On the Actor Feuds episode, um, Kiz Mashing says that their father worked security and said that Tommy Lee Jones was the rudest man he's ever met and Nicolas Cage was the nicest and would always spend time getting to know the whole crew on set. Mm, that, that does not surprise me. Yeah, that doesn't <laughs> no, surprise not me. Not even all. a little bit. Um, have you seen The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent? I have to. I haven't seen it's, it yet. It's really good. Yeah. You, yeah. I keep seeing the, the the memes from it. Yeah. But I but I feel like that's how Nicolas Cage like actually is. Mm. <laughs> like and I know it's like it's like a fictionalized version of him, but I just feel like it's real. Anyway. I love it when actors play fictionalized versions of themselves. Have you oh, seen yeah. like all, making fun of themselves? Yeah. yeah. Have you seen Always Be My Maybe on Netflix? Uh uh-uh. uh. Keanu Reeves plays himself and it is fucking hilarious. <laughs> It is so amazing. <laughs> or like, awesome. um, what, uh, what's his name? Neil Patrick Harris, how he shows up in all the Harold and Kumar oh, yeah. movies as like as this drug fueled like prostitute Humping obsessed. The the car. <laughs> yeah, he's just a fucking insane person. <laughs> Um, and then we had some follow up from the Conqueror episode. Um, so a lot of people were joining in on hating John Wayne, both as an actor and a human being. So <laughs> yeah. you're not alone, Clint. Good, yeah. um, so on Instagram, Z Bilster said, I just watched Genghis Khan 1965 with Omar Sharif. James Mason in Yellowface is so cringe and embarrassing. James Mason. I James Mason. did not know that there was a second Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan movie that was made like, what, 10 years later or whatever? <laughs> and they did not learn any lessons. Mm. Well, I no. mean, if it was Omar Sharif, that's at least something. That's, it's <laughs> that's sli- a step in the right direction. It's slightly better, but like, but James Mason's makeup is not any better than like the shaman's makeup no. from no. The Conqueror. It's, yeah, it's not great. Um, And then also on Instagram, Hollywood Actor Lab said, how, how, how did you miss the golden pun opportunity when you said that the hawk was talented? (laughs) Um, And I I almost had to quit this podcast. I I was so embarrassed. I'm ashamed that I did not pick up on that pun because holy shit, it's great. That is awesome. Well done. And And uh, and as I told someone else on a YouTube comment, I I can't. (laughs) I can't endorse or encourage Jenny Ray's puns usage, so. I can. <laughs> I do. Um, anyway, so that's our follow-up. So thanks, everybody, for who wrote in and for your comments. And if you want us to read a comment, you know, leave us a comment on Instagram or on Twitter or on or YouTube. at Clint. Or at Clint directly. <laughs> Call him out on his bullshit. We done? We're done. Let's go. Let's get out of here. <laughs> I'm definitely going to get replaced after this. <laughs> One last thing. Well, we got to do our Patreon shout outs. 
Yeah, we have uh, two new uh, meddling executives. Our first one is Rebel Notorious, which surprisingly, they're very... Mild-mannered, I've heard. <laughs> yeah. Just not Notorious <laughs> nor a rebel. Yeah, they, they're they the person at the grocery store that doesn't step on chips. It does yeah. not. Like, they put the chips back on the shelf. Yes. Very clean, very tidy. Yeah. <laughs> and I heard that they uh, are dating Mr. Clean. Yes. I heard that too through the through the the, the grape juice vine in the, in the, in the aisle over <laughs> the Welch's grape juice. yeah from the, the Welch's, Welch's grape, grape juice vine. <laughs> Would you need if you spill a lot of that? You need Mister Clean exactly <laughs> and a little brawny. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, if there is one thing that we have to say about Rebel Notorious, they get around. <laughs> they get around. I mean, you can do better than brawny man, the brawny man, the and brawny Mr. man, Mister Clean. Mr. Right. Clean. <laughs> Um, and then our our next one is Michael, uh, Clint Michael. And what, hold on, Michael Walker the second. Well, do we want to put their? Oh, whole I don't name? know. I was just gonna make a joke about how they might be that British lord who bought Food Fight <laughs> for two point five million. Sold to Michael Walker the Michael second. Michael Walker the second. <laughs> Ooh, how how delightful! Yeah, very a very posh British lord. Uh, Michael is. Uh, not only did he buy a food fight, but he also bought the entire Thames River. <laughs> he was, his whole plan was to try and clean it up. Yeah. Uh, That's an impeccable Alan Rickman. <laughs> yes. Or James Mason. <laughs> James Mason. Um, he's using some of that river money to support uh, the podcast as a meddling executive. Mm-hmm. So. And he's selling every frame of, <laughs> of food fight as an NFT. As an NFT. <laughs> Yo, oh, oh, oh. That is... That is kind of brilliant. Your eyes just lit up like, yes, I want that grocery store woman. <laughs> I want Larry Miller's Choco Bat. <laughs> I do. I love that whole scene. Uh, oh. um, well, we look forward to Michael's release of uh, Food Fight as an NFT collection. You know, see, supporting the arts at so many levels. Yes. Thank, <laughs> thank you so much for meddling in, in our little in our little podcast. Yep. Going for point zero zero two ETH a piece. <laughs> <laughs> Those are words you said. I have no idea what they mean. <laughs> I know. I know. I got you. Uh, yeah, that's that's it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank to you, all patrons. Of our Patreons. Yeah. Hey, if you guys want to follow me. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> Let me chill for a second. Wait, who are you again? I'm the, the brand icon from Ryan K. Hudson. If you want to see some tunes from our brand. It's all name brand. All day brand tunes. <laughs> Ryan K. Hudson brand. I promise the animation is better than Food Fight. Oh, I, a million I percent. A million percent swear better. to you. It's actually animated. You need to get into this motion capture thing. Yeah. yeah. No kidding. Get some of your like Looney Tune actions going I, with your comics. I could comics. pocket millions of investor money <laughs> if I just had motion capture. Million views. <laughs> million views. Ryan, you sucker, didn't you know that money's not an animation? It's an insurance fraud. I, know. I need to burn down a house or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works, right? Yeah. Someone else's I house. declare an insurance policy <laughs> on my neighbor's house. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, Yay, for sure. I'm so gl- glad to have you. Mm-hmm. Our animation expert. Yeah. I didn't even mention that I used to be a motion capture technician. What? I just remembered that. <laughs> Dude, you're going to throw that in at the I fucking end? I had a job for three months, but I was a motion capture technician. On Food Fight? No. Yeah. That's why the motion. Did, you were so that, good at the motion. Yeah, I did the scene where they hold hands and walked away yeah. and never connected their hands. <laughs> that is a that is amazing. Oh, God. Did you ever have to work with any dicks? Uh, some assholes. 